Welcome back to another LMMS tutorial. In this video, we're going to be playing with the controller rack and adding in different controllers and learning how to use them. So controllers are pretty similar to what we learned in the last video, well, kind of similar to an automation track. It lets us control a knob like the volume and pan or a slider like the volumes. Um, so, or any option. So if we come in here, we have all these different settings for how this sounds. We can add any of these to a controller. So anything that we could actually double click on and change the value, change a number, we can add that uh, to a controller. I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say we want to pan. Let's say we just get a constant sound here, just playing for four bars, and we want to have this pan from left to right. So if I turn on looping, we want it to pan sort of like this in the left ear and then pan to the right ear, and just the whole song have that panning kind of toggling around. We can add a controller, so we click Add, and it adds this LFO controller. If we click Controls, it shows the controls for it, and it's fairly simple. So now, um, we just need to tie this panning knob to this controller, and to do that, we right-click on it and go to Connect to Controller. And then it says, which controller do you want to connect it to? We say uh, User Controller, and it's Controller 1, because we see the name of this is Controller 1. Now if we say OK, immediately, even though our song's not playing, immediately it's just controlled to it. So it's as if someone's turning that pan, like a person's grabbing onto that knob and twisting it from right to left throughout the whole composition. So now if we play, it creates that sort of panning left to right effect. Um, then we can tell, let's pretend this is still a person controlling that, so we can tell them, hey, hey, you're going too fast, like slow down. So we change the speed, the speed knob's right here. So if we, if we raise the speed, it actually makes this go slower because it's saying like the speed, the kind of, this is controlled by a wave and right now it's using just like a, a sine wave so it's very, very smooth and uniform. But if we wanted to make it more like a square wave, we can have it like this so it's square and it's just binary. So it's gonna be left, we can make it go faster. So look, now it's left, right. It just toggles between the two. We can do the volume too, for example. Let's right-click the volume and let's go connect to controller. We can also connect, we can get, connect as many things as we want to, to this controller. Let's do a different wave, like this one's more, this one's gonna be, actually I guess this one's more like uniform too. But these are just gonna go at different rates. So this, the shape of the wave, if you can imagine a wave, the best thing to do is just kind of play with this. Click on different waves, change some of these different things here and see what they do. Um, like this amount here is going to be like where it starts, so it's not going to go all the way up now. It's only going to go to the middle. Actually, that's way too extreme. So, But now it's not going to go all the way down. It's just going to go to here and to here. Let's connect our uh, vo master volume if we right-click and go to connect to controller and also connect that to controller one. Now our slider is doing the same thing as these dials, and they're all being controlled by this LFO controller. So if we want them to go slower, we just raise the speed up and they're going to go much, much slower. If we want to go faster, we just do this and they're going to be super fast and we hit play. And we've created this cool kind of effect. Um, something cool you can do, so it's, it's fun to think about everything that you can map to these. So we can come like, for example, the triple oscillator has like, plays different notes. And the note that it's playing is actually, has this square above it, is like we learned in the past when you bring in like an audio file, uh, using the audio file processor, that's like the, the sample that it uses. So this is like the sample, but we can actually change this square. So if we right click on it, we can tie it to the controller as well. Connect to controller, and this is just gonna make this square move all over the place, and it's really gonna change the way, instead of a constant now, we get this. So just by tying that on there, if that doesn't make sense, what it's really doing, it's playing a constant note, but we've told our instrument to toggle between what it's using as its source. So it gets kind of crazy. Where's that, Where's that at? <laughs> um, what else did I want to show you? Okay, so we can actually in here as well, I'm going to hit stop. We can actually tie in, if we go to effects, we can add an effect in here as well. And some of these effects, like we won't do it on this one, let's do it on our, a lot of times you'll see it on the beat and bass line. So if we just have a beat like this. Let's 
We get a beat and it's playing here. Let's turn the volume down. Oh, we can't turn the volume down because it's tied. If you want to ever unlink something, you just right click on it and go to remove connection under connect to controller one, remove connection. Now our volume's not doing that anymore. So we can turn it down. Oops. So, uh, where are we at here? So if we want to control, what I'm going to do here is under this FX1, I want to link my base and hit stop on that. So this base here on, under kicker, we pull up the instrument and we go to the effects tab. We can add an effect to this um, and we want to add in, I forget. We want to add in, oh, it's like a peak. So this peak controller, if we click add, now peak controller appears over here in our controller rack. So we have two controllers. One's this LFO, which is doing this thing. And the other one's this peak controller, which it's gonna control a knob or a dial or something based on the peak of the audio played by this instrument. So let's tie this. Let's, uh, well, first of all, let's put this over into FX1, this kicker. So this kicker instrument will be tied to this FX1. And then we'll right click and we'll go connect to controller and we'll connect it to controller two. So it's connected now to the peak controller. And now every time we play a key on this instrument, look, it moves, the, it raises the volume. And so if we hit play, every time the bass plays, our volume goes up. And we can come to our peak controller and lower down the amount here. So it's not quite so crazy. But that gives us sort of this like uh, pumping effect that you'll see a lot of times with like bass, especially if you have like a constant bass beat. Um, that's kind of cool. And so just know that sometimes when you when you add an effect in this way, it'll also appear in your controller rack. Not all the time. If we add just like an amplifier, that's just going to add an amplification effect to this instrument, but it's not necessarily controlled in the controller rack. Uh, yeah, so play with these. Play with the controller rack. Play with... Um, you know, this in combination with the automation track is really what sets uh, like software like this apart, what actually gives um, LMMS its power as opposed to just using something like Audacity. Everything we've done in the past, in theory, you could just grab some audio files and, you know, splice audio together. But when you get into this automation and controlling and mapping certain knobs and dials and sliders to, uh, to certain parts of the music, um, it's when you can really create, I mean, just like this, We've created this sound just by mapping uh, our instrument to a dial. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. Hope you found this video informative. Go ahead and play with that. Um, this is something you can play with for hours, and uh, I'm excited to actually play with it a lot more and get more familiar with it. But uh, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe if you found this video informative. Ask your questions below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope to see you on the next video.